Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we got an 85 uh, Honda Big Red 250ES. I'm um, gonna put a clutch in it and some springs, new gasket, and a one-way uh, bearing, um, which is pretty neat. So I'm gonna show you, take the steps to go through that and explain a little bit as we go along. We're not gonna do a lot of talking, just gonna do a lot of work and I got a lot to get done. So uh, gonna be kind of a quick video, but uh, I'll take you through the process. And if you have any questions, put them in the comments below. I appreciate it and uh, hopefully it'll help you out. Here we go. So taking the cover off is pretty straightforward. I think you have around 10 uh, bolts that go all the way around. Remember, all of this is metric. Um, if you find a standardized bolt in here, somebody's put the wrong bolt in. Uh, if, when you go to remove your Kickstarter, remember that's a pinch bolt. So you wanna take the bolt out of it. And if you look real close, just throw some guys off. I know you gotta pull the bolt all the way out. Don't just loosen it and then pull it off. If you look really close, the bolt actually passes through the opening. There's a recess on the, the spline of the shaft. So you put your bolt all the way out, then you can slide your kicker off. And then of course, it's just the opposite when you go to reinstall. Again, I take all the buckets, all the bolts and put in the bucket. That's how I keep everything straight between the bikes. Um, the easiest thing to do on, on the 85, 86, and 87, I take this assembly off on the two bolts. No point taking the pedal off and all of that. Two bolts. Pull the whole assembly out like so, and then just drop it back out of the way. It's not gonna hurt anything. Uh, you've got two electrical components, uh, hookups. You've got a uh, safety for your reverse uh, and your neutral start. You can just unplug those from the case. Uh, there are two that are bullet connectors and then one plug. So that pretty much frees the case up, the outer cover of the case. You've got your oil feed line here in the top of the uh, Top of the case, you want to be sure and disconnect that as well. Turn it a little closer. Like so. And there's a bolt here, and there's a bolt in the back of the head here. And then you can loosen right underneath, underneath the tank where it actually feeds the oil to the head. That is important. Be sure and put that back in there. It's a banjo style bolt. It has a copper washer on it, and then it has a hole in it. And that bolt is actually hollow. Oil comes out of the oil filter, runs up into the head, and that's what pressurizes that system. So be sure and put that back when you get done. Very important. All right, so now we've got our head, uh, our case to come off. Um, you got your kicker spline here, and then you also have your, um, there's a spline in the bottom that goes for your neutral safety switch. Uh, so you want to make sure that when you pull this cover off, you pull it off square. What I do is I go around behind with a uh, with a pry bar and I reach through and I tap against the case. There's an, a little embossing right here on the top. You can reach from the other side with a long uh, pry bar or pinch bar, maybe a really long screwdriver. Reach through and you can tap on it there and you can tap on it the same way on the bottom. Once you get it free, it slides straight out. If it does get a little crooked on you, it will hang up. And more than likely, it's on two of the... You can take this oil out. Now remember, once you pull this cover off for the first time, all the oil's gonna dump out the bottom. So I take the bike and I raise it up on the right side and I put a, uh, something underneath the tire you hear. You see here, I've got a rim from another ATC just sitting here elevating. That gives me about 10 inches of rise. That's about all you need. You're going to lose the majority of your oil. Um, so it's a good opportunity to do this when you're ready for an oil change. So now that you got the case loose, you just want to slide it straight out. Okay, be mindful that there is an arm in here, which is this arm right here. And this is your gear selector uh, for your auto clutch. You want to keep in mind where that is. As you see here, there's an actual little, uh, I would call it a shim, not a washer right here. So you want to be mindful of that. You can just pull this assembly straight off. Just remember the orientation when you take it off. It's a good idea to take a picture. You know, if you've never seen one of these taken off before, take a picture and then keep that together and put it in your bucket. All right, you've got two specialized bolts in here, basically, that you need to be mindful of. The first one is the one that holds the clutch on. Um, well, this is actually the shoes. This is your centrifugal clutch, and then this is your actual clutch pack and they work in conjunction. One is for takeoff and one is for running down the trail. Um, so these shoes do wear, but they actually, you can get a, a ton of ton of use out of them. I mean, years and years and years of use. You don't really have to change these out that often. Uh, you just need to inspect them. Uh, this clutch is in question. This is the clutch pack here in the back, and we're gonna get to that. 
Now be mindful when you take this off, look at it really close. As you see, I can rotate this clockwise, and that's correct, but I can't rotate it counterclockwise without rolling the whole engine over. And that's the difference. That's where the one-way bearing comes in. This bolt right here is reverse thread, but it is reverse thread. You see, I'm actually turning it clockwise and it comes off. Now, when you do that, you'll be able to slide this entire clutch mechanism straight out. So that's what it looks like when you pull it off the shaft. It's a good opportunity to inspect for, you know, if you're looking for any types of metal shavings or anything, like I said, take a picture. There's another shim on the front of this clutch mechanism. And then I'll show you what this looks like if you were to turn it over. You'll see the shoes here. And what you're looking for is you see the grooves on the inside of the band here where my thumb is. That's a normal wear. It's going to be there. You're going to see those same shoes line up. They're going to correspond here. Those grooves are going to line up here. Now, this is your one-way bearing. And this bearing allows it only to turn in one direction. And that's what makes it special. We're going to do that on the end when we finish up this job. But I wanted to take a moment and show that to you. So I'm just going to set that to the side. The same order that it came off. You get a shim and then your reverse nut on there. Now, while you're in here, it's a good idea to just kind of wipe things down. You know, you're looking for any type of metal shavings or any type of uh, debris that's not supposed to be in here. You should find just oil. I believe somebody's been in this engine before in two reasons. One, the actual, there's RVT between the cases, halves, and there's the remainder of the old gasket. And you're going to find the hardest part of this job is changing the old gasket out. So the other thing is these four bolts right there. So you'll need a 10 millimeter wrench. These are standard rotation here. Now, this is probably goes against some of y'all's rules, but this is how I do it. I just hold it with my bare hand. I'm sure there's a, a tool for this, but I don't have one. Now I back these off evenly all the way around. Put your thumb on here. There's, this is a bearing here in the middle. You don't really want to drop that or lose it. But I'm releasing the pressure evenly on all four of these springs. So it doesn't get all kind of crooked. I think we're there. And it's not that much tension. I just did, I wouldn't want it to get, you know, all kind of crooked one way or the other. I like to take things apart in an assembly, like so and kind of remember where everything is in the right orientation and then set it apart on a paper towel or something, you know, on the counter or on the floor. Now these springs come off, they're all individual. And you can actually compare them to the newer springs that we have, like so. And if you look really close, they're a little shorter. So what happens over time is these are compressed their entire life and they just get weaker. And so this is the springs that actually, these are the springs, excuse me, that actually hold the spring clutch pack together. So I'm going to set the old parts here to the side. But it's always good to compare your new and old parts. You'd be surprised how much you get this far into a project and uh, somebody sent you the wrong parts. All right, now on the 250ES, you do need to take the splash guard off of the splash shield. I believe this is what helps control the oil. Back to the, uh, there's a little screen in the bottom of the cover. I'm not certain of that, but it does line up with that. Again, when I take things apart, I try to keep the nuts and the parts together. That way they go back in the same hole, in the same spot. As you, you may not have noticed on that, but that particular one, two different lengths of studs, two different lengths of bolts on that one, and that's why I do it. It's just easier for me to remember where the long one and the short one goes. So now with that taken off, there's one other bolt that may give you trouble, and that's this one right here. Let's see if it's the same. And it is. I would suggest an impact on it. Now this bolt is not reverse rotation, it's standard rotation. Again, I just kind of hold this clutch pack with my hands. Don't put your fingers on the back of it though. You will catch them behind those gears. All right. So remembering where things are, again, keep things together. There's a shim on the front of this or a washer. And I'm just going to hold this outer spring pack together. I'll put the, the nut right on top of it. And that's how I'll set it on my table here. And so these are your clutch discs. 
You'll have a clutch, just like an automatic transmission, a, a vehicle, a car, truck. You'll have an actual clutch disc, and then you'll have a steel shim that goes between it. And based on the wear is how smooth these are. When you buy them, there's a, a, a larger indentation between each one of these little square pads that you see. This tells you that this clutch is pretty war, but I, I've seen a lot less. This bike would slip just a little bit in, in top gear. If you were in, uh, in fourth and you were really winding it out, it would slip just a little bit, but it wasn't noticeable lower end. I knew it was on the verge of needing a clutch, but since I'm already here, now's the time to do it. We'll do an oil change. Uh, we'll replace the clutches, the springs, and the one-way bearing, and then no one will have to come in here for many, many years. So we're going to go ahead and pull that apart, and if you remember, it's disc first and then steel. Now, you'll want to reuse your steels, okay, and they're just as they sound. It's just a you know, round piece of steel, but it alternates. If you've never done this before, it's pretty straightforward. A clutch disc and a steel, clutch disc and a steel, and so forth. You have five actual clutch disc and four steels. And that's all there is to it. So there's your four steels. I'm just gonna set those there. I'm gonna wipe them off since I have them out. But these are your clutch discs. Now last night I came out and I oiled down the new clutches. They're over there on the table and I'll bring them out in just a second, show them to you. Um, the, some people let them sit in automatic transmission fluid. I don't get that. They're always submerged in, in oil, so I feel that it's probably best to just soak them in oil. I don't soak them in transmission fluid. Now, if I was building an automatic transmission in a car, then of course I would let them soak in transmission fluid. I figure they spend their whole life in motor oil. Why would you soak them in something other than motor oil? So I'm gonna set those to the side and I'll show you the clutch disc. Now, Keep in mind, I do a lot of recycling around here. These are the lids to those blue coffee buckets that I use for parts. So these are your clutch disc, and these are inexpensive. Um, there's several different companies that make them. You can find them online. You can actually find them in the description if you want. So I'm gonna bring those over and wipe them off a little bit, and we'll get started on putting it all back together. So you wanna take your clutch, and it doesn't matter which way you go. The, there's not an inside or an outside, and it lines up with the grooves in this basket. This is called your basket. And then what you'll want to do is take a steel and I'm just going to wipe these off. Make sure that they're clean. Now some people will actually scuff these up. Um, if the clutch was slipping really bad, I would probably do that. But this clutch wasn't slipping that bad, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that. These steels just sit in here. Now the trick to this, when you're putting it all back together, is that they line up. That these clutches line up here with the basket, but your steels, they have an internal cog, if you will, and you want to make sure that that cog lines up because if it doesn't, then the outer drum won't line up either. So these teeth in here, it's important that they line up and you don't have to, you know, make sure each one of them is perfect right off the bat. You can line them up after you get them installed. And that's actually the easier time to do this. Now I've tried to assemble clutches and slide the whole thing in as a unit. <laughs> Always fights me. So I find it's actually easier to do them this way. So I just take one in at a time and then I line the teeth up across the bottom. Clutch, stick it in. Wipe my steel off. Now I would recommend an impact uh, driver on this or a, an air gun. You just, that way you don't have to hold it with two different wrenches. So that's actually the, the you know installing of a clutch. It really is that easy. And what I'm going to come in here, and what I was telling you about what's important that they line up is this cog that you see here on the outside of this hub has to line up and be able to slide all the way in and seat against this drum. Now you see that there's a washer there. That's why I keep all this stuff together. And there's also a shim on the inside and the outside of this drum. So don't just take this stuff off and you know. Put it anywhere kind of pay attention to it and uh you can put it right back together it's it's not rocket science for for sure if i can figure it out you can figure it out one more okay so that's how far this outer basket should sit it should sit flush almost to this outer edge now you want to check that you can pull your basket or this drum back out of the basket 
and make sure, as you see, all the teeth are in a nice straight row all the way to the back. That way you know that this is orientated correctly. And make sure that you've got this hub all the way seated in. Take your thumbs and put on the hub and then grab to the clutch disc. And see how the clutch disc can move in and out? We'll zoom in a little bit and let you see that. It's important because you go putting those springs on there and this isn't set right, it's not going to work. Uh, or at least the clutch is not going to not going to disengage it's going to be locked up so put your thumbs here on this outer uh, hub is what i'm calling it and then take your fingers and then grab the clutch disc and see how you can move the disc in and out and they move freely all right that means that this hub is bottomed out as far as it can go in and it's not pinching one of these discs or one of the steels and so that's what you want you want to be able to do that with your fingers okay so now we're just going to repeat that process we're going to put it all back together we're going to top it off with oil. The most difficult part of this entire process, honestly, is getting the old gasket off of the two surfaces. Is once you get your clutch disc and steels installed, is this outer nut and the shim that goes with it. Now it actually says outside. That means facing out. Okay, so you can see that on there. Outside. And if you look really close, it's actually kind of got a dish to it. It's not exactly flat up and down washer. But it tells you which way it goes, and then this nut actually goes on with the crown out. What that crown is for, if you look really close, you see where it looks like it's got a flat spot on it? All right, what you're supposed to do is indent that just a little bit. That keeps that nut from backing off. There's a flat spot on this shaft to accept that dent. Uh, it's called staking a nut. So again, this is right-handed thread, or proper or standard thread. I use an impact on this. This is one of the few bolts that I actually do use an impact on. Um, you want it tight. Hold this with your hand or you can use one of those uh, rubberized wrenches. Just do not put your fingers back here behind it. Okay. Now if we look close, now where our bolt was, that little flat spot is actually like a keyway is what that is. And you can take a... Uh, punch and a hammer and what you want to do is you want to stake that bolt so it will not back out and it doesn't take a lot of effort just a little bit if you don't have a, a punch set you can certainly use a, a, a flathead screwdriver one of the many things you can use a flathead screwdriver for so to show you the differences in the parts as you take in and change them out Look at the difference of our size here. Now this is a heavy duty kit, so they say, but if you look and compare it to the original, it is a little longer. And it looks like the winding on the steel is the same. So probably it's the same uh, spring rate. It's just these have been compressed from being on there for so many years, and then these are new. So you set these on here, so, and then you take those four bolts. You kind of have to do all this at one time to capture all of the springs and all of the bolts. It doesn't matter which way these go on there. They're, they're either way. All right. So what we've got here is, is four bolts and a bearing. We're going to line up those four bolts with these four springs. And we're going to try to just get one started and then go around or back and forth. It's like you would tightening up a wheel on a car. And we're going to run these down tight. This is actually what sets the, the tension on the clutch. The pack itself. Remember that's a 10 millimeter. And I'm going to walk it down to make sure none of these springs get out of position. I'm just going to go down a little bit, rotating all the way around. I'm not going to run these down with this gun. I don't trust these, these bolts or this gun. And I'm going to do these by hand. And you want them tight, but I don't want to break them off. So basically we've compressed the springs as far as they'll go. And they're bottomed out at this point. Not quite the coil bond, but very, very close. Okay, so now the next part, that pretty much takes care of our clutch pack. Next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is just reverse the order that we took everything off in. Put everything back just like you got it. 
This is our splash guard. Again, I'm not gunning these bolts down with this drill. The drill is just for convenience. Now the next thing we're going to want to tackle is we're going to, going to get our one-way bearing. And the most important part of this process is putting it in the right way. Um, I've heard stories, you guys putting it in the wrong way and they, they start the bike up and uh, the just clutch just doesn't work at all. They have to dump all the oil out and start all the way over. So I want to try to avoid that if you can help it. These are marked in what direction they are. You look close, this says outside. Now I, I read a forum somewhere where a guy said his was mislabeled. So we're not gonna go by just what it says. It does say outside and this does tell us the rotation, which in this one, the, the way I'm holding it is clockwise. If you look on the other side, it's not marked at all. So we're just gonna put that to the side for a second. And what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna verify what we need to have. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this back on, okay? And I know, we know before we took it apart that you can turn it clockwise but you can't turn it counterclockwise. I really can't show not being able to turn it, but I can turn one way, but I can't turn the other. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna pull this apart in sections, okay? So those are our shoes, our centrifugal clutch, and then right in here is our one-way bearing. I'm gonna pull it out. Like so. Now it is not, it is marked. It's marked outside. And I'm trying to read to see if there's an arrow on it. I do not see an arrow on it, but it does say outside. There's the arrow. And the arrow on this one is actually pointing counterclockwise. You look really, really, really close. See it right there by, by where my thumb is? There's an arrow. It's counterclockwise to the way I took it off. So we're going to want to make sure that our new one, which is here, even though it says outside and clockwise, Let's see what it's going to do. I think one-way bearing is pretty neat. All right, now see, now I've put it in backwards and I can spin it counterclockwise, but not clockwise. So, I wanted to make sure we were doing it the right way. I'm going to take the bearing and I'm going to actually put it opposite of the way it says. See where it says outside right there by my thumb? All right. Now that's the opposite of what you should do. That's why you check this stuff. You don't just throw it in there. Some of these jobs is just easier to check it now than to put it all back together and find out you got a problem. Now in your 200 classes, and I gotta tell you, I've done a lot more of those than, than these 250 class bikes. This, make, this whole hub here, the centrifugal clutch, there's a predetermined notch inside this basket, and that's you have to line the two up. So if you're watching this video and you wanna go do your 200X or your, your 185S or something like that, I, gotta tell you, I have more experience with those. You have to line this up. There's a bell on the back side, and it, you spin this, until that indention that's here, that you'll see it, it's on the side of the basket. When it lines up down here, you can slide that whole assembly out. So I was looking for that on this one, but it's not here and I've forgotten that. Now, we're gonna check that one-way bearing. I can turn it clockwise, but I can't turn it counterclockwise without rotating the engine, which is correct, that's what you want. So always check that before you reassemble. Again, I keep my nut and my washer together so I know what's the orientation of them. You see here, it's marked outside on that washer. And then your nut is, this particular nut is not, it's the same on the inside or the outside. So you have your nut and you put it on here, your washer, and then your nut. Now remember this bolt is counter uh, clockwise to tighten it. So you wanna run your, your gun in reverse.
and that's really all there is to it. A couple more things as I'm cleaning up. There is a screen filter in the bottom here. You don't get to it very often, so by all means, take the moment to clean it out. It's right in here. I'm gonna pull out the pair of pliers. Just be real careful with it. It slides in. As you see, it's just a, it's just a screen. It's like an old screen door, if you will. That's really all there is to it. I mean, basic hand tools, um, only because you need an impact would it really require special tools. Otherwise, basic hand tools, you can do this job yourself. And uh, so a couple things so you know if you need to even do the job. And, and you know, that's a lot of mechanic and is, uh, is you're not sure. You know, do I, need a, do I need a clutch? How can you tell? Well, on the Hondas specifically, because that's really all I know, is uh, when you accelerate from a dead stop, you're running on this first clutch here, the, the primary, if you will. And if you will find that, you know, they hardly ever wear out. The shoes last forever. It's really a great design. If you stab the throttle and it rears up in a wheelie, then that's good, and that means that your primary is working fine. It's an automatic system. Um, that centrifugal clutch as you spin up the engine it makes a, a stronger and stronger uh, grab onto the uh, the drive line and then of course that causes the bike to rear up so that's good that's your first check now when you go into second gear and you're winding first out and you go into second if you feel the rpms of the engine rev up but you slow down and then it kind of starts to catch back up if you feel kind of a like it's really soft if you're holding the gas wide open and, and you feel the bike kind of lull down in second and then kind of pick back up as maybe you let off the gas. That's exactly what you're looking for. If you're experiencing that on one of these, you need to rebuild a clutch. And that's all there is to it. You just watch me do it in 10 minutes. Um, if I didn't talk so much, you could probably do it in five. But I want you to know going in some of the things to expect, some of the things to look out for. Um, that's, that's just who I am. I'm trying to help you out and I'm over explaining it. But that's how you know if you need a clutch, is really that second, third, fourth, and fifth gear changes. If, uh, if you feel a lag or a slip, if you're in top gear, let's say you're in fourth or fifth and you're winding out down the road and you can give it gas and the bike really doesn't accelerate anymore um, and you, you hear the engine rev up, but you're not going any faster, again, that clutch is slipping. You can pull your oil uh, dipstick and if your oil looks really, really black, if you see any you know, particles that this clutch residue, uh, is the actual disc itself. Um, if you find that on the stick, of course, you need to clean the, change the oil. But along that, you also need to change the clutch. Now, tips for the one-way bearing. How do you know if you need that or not? Well, the one-way bearing, the, the telltale on that is when you turn the bike off, if you hear kind of a whirly sound, and I, I know that sounds kind of funny, when you turn the bike off, all this mechanism is still spinning. Now, it should come to a complete stop when you turn the bike off, and that's it. Well, when the one-way bearings go bad, they slip. And so when you turn the bike off, this drum here on this centrifugal clutch will continue to spin and then it will go zzzz, kunk. If you hear that on your 300, uh, you know, Honda four-wheelers, all the way down to these 250 ES classes, if you hear that kunk, then you need a one-way bearing. They're not expensive anymore. They used to be quite expensive. They're not anymore. Uh, you can find you know aftermarket ones online. Shindy makes a really good one. You can pick those up for about thirty or forty-five dollars. Uh, check eBay. Uh, I even think there are some on Amazon. Um, so keep you know keep an eye out. But like I said, that's a good uh, a good company to make a good product. You can put that in and not worry about it. I like Shindy products, the Shindy piston ring pack. Um, I like their one-way clutch or excuse me one-way bearing. But that's really it. That's, that's really all there is to it. And, and right there, you've saved yourself probably, you know, $250 in, in labor to take it somewhere. We're going to, once the uh, case is cleaned up and the parts washer, we'll put the gasket on it. You can buy almost all of this as a kit. You can get a clutch kit that comes with the clutch disc, steels, and springs, as well as a new gasket. You really can't go wrong with that. Add in a one-way bearing, and it's, it's an afternoon well spent out in the garage. Um, so I'm going to pause this again. I'm going to get the case cleaned up and then we'll reassemble. Thanks. So we got our gasket in. We're going to go ahead and install it after we put in our screen. All right. So we got our gasket back in place and uh, just kind of double checking a few things. You again, you want to make sure that you can spin this outer shell here, this uh, bell, I guess I think that's what they call it. Um, you want to be able to spin it 
clockwise, not counterclockwise. If you spin it clockwise, the engine should turn, which this one's trying to do so. Make sure that your clutch pack is tight, that your springs are all the way tight. Make sure these springs are compressed all the way. Do not break these bolts off. You will be in a world of hurt if you do. We got our gasket in place. It's held on now with a little light oil that I sprayed on it and these dowel pins in either location. Now, we talked about this spring down here on your neutral safety. Um, I take that spring and kind of get it bound up against the case down here on the bottom. I'll show that to you. It does take a punch to push it in and get it to sit up on top of that shelf there. Okay, and when you put the case on, it's going to pop back a little bit, but this is how I start off. You also want to make sure that this is your gear selector or from the other side it comes through the case. You want to make sure this is in the orientation here. Just a little off of 12 o'clock. This is how this one was when I took it apart. Yours may be different. If you've pulled the case off and you're in neutral or first or reverse or something, this could be in a different orientation. So, again, take a picture before you go any further. Once you take this case off, Take a picture of everything while the oil's draining out and you're kind of getting your tools together. That way when you go to put it back together, you can look at the picture and go, oh yeah, okay, I need to move this, you know, move it one way or the other. So that's just a little tip. It's an old tip, but it's, uh, it's useful. So I'm gonna take this case and slide it back on. Our case is clean. We've clean changed the filter in it. We've changed the screen in the lower part of the case. We've got our gear selector in the right orientation. And the, the real key to this is just going really slow. Don't force it. You just want to walk it on. You've got three or four pieces that you're trying to line up. And, and that's, that's really the most important part. Your gear selector is going to sit in this needle bearing down here. Your kicker is going to pass through this hole here. And then you actually your main crank is going to ride in this big, large bearing here in the case. So make sure those are the things, those are the key components you're trying to line up. So just take your time and make sure that as you push it on, it goes on square to the engine. And it's, it's not just going to fall on. You're going to kind of have to walk it on. There's a lot of different things you got to line up. And it's got to go on square and straight. Otherwise, it's going to get bound up. And then you're going to be fighting with it. And you don't want to fight with any of that. Okay. And that's what you want. If you look really close, that last little hiccup there was this selector coming through the bottom. There's a gasket down here, so it's a little tight fit. So that's coming through the case. You got to watch out for that. You got to watch out for your kicker. You got to watch out for this oil pickup cooler or supply line here. And then, of course, you can feel this bearing as you push this case on. You can actually feel it slide in there. So that's good. It's a good tight fit. At this point, you want to check and make sure your gasket, you see how the gaskets fell down a little bit in here. So I'm actually going to pull it back off just a little bit. I'm going to try to fish that gasket. It should be like this all the way around. But you can go ahead and take a bolt and get it going and get your gasket. You can pull your case out just a little bit. Get your gasket to where it actually, you can kind of tell that the bolt passes through the gasket. Remember, there's a hole there for that gasket. And then once you get that bolt, just work your way around, walking the gasket in all the way around like that. And if you can, see how that gasket just kind of moved up a little bit when I put that bolt in it? What that bolt does is it's pushing that gasket out of the way. And so that's what we want. And I'm working my way to the right because the gasket has moved in a little bit. So this is going to allow me to kind of force the gasket into position here and walk it around. And I'm just wiping these off as I go to make sure... Like I said, the previous owner used some RVT on here. I want to make sure that's off these bolts. And I'll make sure these bolts pass through. You see how I can make that gasket move down there? See how it's not in the right spot? So I'm going to pull out my pocket knife here. I'm going to try to grab just the corner of that gasket. I'm going to try to pull it out a little bit. At the same time, I'm trying to put the bolt through the hole. There. Now the bolt goes through the gasket. The gasket is free and it's hanging out where it should, right at the edge of the case. Now I'm just going to continue that all the way around. When I do have to use RBT, if I just got to have something fixed and I don't have a, uh, I don't have time to wait for a gasket or make a gasket, 
use the gasket maker, use gray. It doesn't show up as bad on a gray engine. If you've got a black engine, use black uh, and accordingly. Now, when I do use RVT, or gasket maker, try to let it set overnight with no fluid in it. So if this was RVT or gasket maker, I would not put any oil in this engine until tomorrow. Let that gasket maker set and set up overnight without having oil stay on top of it, keeping it wet. Um, let it dry and do what it does. That's the only, I've had good luck or success when I've taken my time and let the gasket maker sit overnight without any uh, fluid against it. You go put an RVT on it, slamming it back together, filling it up with oil and firing the bike up. It's never gonna have an opportunity to cure and it's not gonna work. You're gonna have leaks and they'll, they'll be problematic. Um, because we're using just a straight gasket here, we really don't have that concern. We can go ahead and put oil in it. And like I said, the problem with this particular job, or this bike, was that when it got up to temperature and the oil thinned out, it leaked right around the top here, around the top of the case. And I don't know what that was. I, I didn't notice really anything. The previous owner didn't use a gasket at all, so it was just RVT. There wasn't, not a, there wasn't a lot of RVT at the top across this joint. Um, so it could just be that they missed a spot and that's where it was leaking. Um, I felt the right thing to do was to go ahead and put a gasket in it. And, and the reason you see me using this wrench here is because you can't move the brake pedal out of the way to use an impact on this bolt. And so this is, though it may look like it takes a little longer, if you get a brake that's seized up, a brake pedal that's seized up, you don't want to have to deal with that. There's a bushing in there, and that can be a real pain in the tail to, uh, to try to fix. I've had to torch them off before. I, I, I don't like doing that. So use a 14 millimeter boxed in wrench here on this inside nut. You can use a ratchet on the front or a, a, a drill or impact driver. But what this does save you, it saves you from taking all this linkage apart and uh, it just gets the pedal out of the way. It's the same if you do it. If you remove an engine from the other side, you can take the pedal off to get all of that out of your way. But that should do it. We're gonna get some oil in her and uh, we're gonna fire it up and make sure we don't have any leaks. day out in the shop be today at work any day of the week um, so thank you for watching hit the subscribe like and share button i appreciate it, it means a lot to the channel and uh, let's save them all bye